Hey guys, today is a special day because I have a very special guest in the kitchen. It's Andrea all the way from Italy and today, well, like I said, it's a special day because we're visiting yep. the fish farm from Dutch Yellowtail Kingfish and then we're going to use that beautiful fish to make some amazing dishes. This is the first episode and there's another one coming. I hope Andrea will be back for that one as well, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Okay, okay, he promised already. So, <laughs> let's just begin. Yeah, sure. Let's begin. The farm is located at the southwest of the Netherlands, next to the Oosterschelde. The Oosterschelde is a nature reserve, making it one of the cleanest and safest waters in the world. The yellowtail fish are grown in this water, and because the water is so pure, they don't need to use any antibiotics or vaccines to protect the fish. The water is constantly renewed. Every 15 minutes, it's completely renewed with new filtered Oosterschelde water. The wastewater is then treated with different steps before it returns back to the Oosterschelde to ensure that the farm has no biological impact to its natural surroundings. Janneke showed us the whole farm and it was super interesting to see. We saw every step from the beginning till the end. Unlike traditional cage farming, their farm is based on land. This makes it impossible for the fish to escape and endanger the natural surroundings. For yellowtail kingfish, sustainability is super important. Almost all the energy comes from the wind and the sun. All of this together with the amazing texture and taste of the fish makes it for a perfect local project. Now before we head home and start cooking, we took a little detour to pick some delicious seaweeds. Just like the yellowtail, they also grow in Oosterschelde water and I love coming here. This time we only took some sea lettuce and we'll use it in our next video. Now we're back in the kitchen and first we'll show you how to fillet one of these amazing yellowtail kingfish. Start by removing the scales. You can also leave them on if you're not using the skin, but I always like removing them anyway because it makes the filleting a lot easier and you don't need to worry about getting scales on your fillets. Now make an incision just behind the fin and cut along the bone of the head. Then directly twist your knife horizontal and cut along the spine all the way down to the tail. Repeat this and put some pressure on your knife to ensure you don't leave any fish on the bones. Now turn the fish around and repeat the same process that we just did. Only now I like to remove the head first. This makes the filleting a lot easier. Then remove the other fillet as well. Now keep the bones and head to make a delicious sauce. Then take one of the fillets and cut the belly bones off. After that use a bone tweezer to remove the remaining bones. You can also just cut them away if you use the top loin and the belly part for different preparations like we're doing today. Then make a small incision at the tail side and use it to pull the skin tight. Now use a long knife to gently remove the skin. Keep the skin tight, otherwise you remove too much fish as well. The loins you can portion into big pieces. In our next video we'll show you how to use them. The bottom part of the fillet you can slice into thin slices. For this I use a really long sharp knife. Now transfer the slices on the tray and keep it covered in your fridge for later. Now for the lavage powder. Spread 40 grams of lavage on a tray and dry it at 50 degrees Celsius till all the moisture has vaporized. Then transfer it into a blender and blend it into a fine powder. Now keep it dry and covered for later. Then for the lavage cream. First pick enough lavage for 40 grams of leaves. The stems you can just dry with the remaining lavage for the powder. Now transfer the 40 grams of leaves into a blender and also add 200 grams of neutral oil. I use sunflower oil. Then blend it till the oil is at 65 degrees Celsius. It will heat up from the friction. After that, pour it on the sieve that's lined with the kitchen paper and let it drain in your fridge. Once that's done, pour 40 grams of egg white into a blender and also add 25 grams of sushi vinegar, 40 grams of ice cubes, 4 grams of salt and 180 grams of the cold lavish oil that we just made. Now blend it till the emulsion is fully emulsified. Then transfer it into a piping bottle and keep it in your fridge for later. Now for the chicken skin crispy. Pour 300 grams of water into a pan and also add 120 grams of chicken skin. Then boil it on a medium heat for 5 minutes. Now when still hot, transfer 100 grams of the cooked skin into a blender and also add 150 grams of the cooking liquid, 45 grams of tapioca pearls or powder and 2 grams of salt. Then blend it to completely smooth and the tapioca starts to thicken from the heat. It needs to look like this. After that add 3 grams of baking soda and mix it to completely smooth. Then transfer it into a piping bag that's fitted with a small round nozzle 
and pipe even dots on a tray that's lined with a silicon sheet. Now put another sheet on top and bake them at 180 degrees Celsius for around 10 minutes till golden and crispy. Once golden, gently remove the top sheet and keep the crispies dry and covered for later. Now for the ponzu. Transfer 20 grams of kombu into a saucepan and also add 120 grams of mirin and 30 grams of rice vinegar. Then bring this to a simmer on a medium heat. After that, turn off the heat and add 4 grams of bonito flakes. Then let it marinate for 10 minutes. Once that's done, pass it through a fine sieve and season it with 60 grams of lime juice and 70 grams of soy sauce. Mix it well and then let it marinate in your fridge for at least 30 minutes. Now for the jelly. First soak one leaf or 1.6 grams of gelatin in cold water. Then pour 100 grams of the ponzu into a saucepan and also add 50 grams of ginger syrup, 50 grams of dark chicken stock and 1.5 grams of acar powder. Now mix this well and then bring it to a boil for one minute. Meanwhile, spray a thin layer of oil on some trays. Once it has boiled, turn off the heat and dissolve the gelatin. Then pour 60 grams of the hot jelly on each tray and when necessary, spread it. Now let it cool down on a leveled surface and then let it set in your fridge for 30 minutes. After that, cut it with the desired cutter. Then for the savory ponzu meringues. Pour 80 grams of the ponzu into a jar and also add 20 grams of lime juice, 100 grams of dark chicken stock, 30 grams of albumina powder, also known as egg white powder, and 90 grams of icing sugar. Blend this to completely smooth. Then pour it into a mixing bowl and beat it till it's a fluffy meringue. This takes around 5 to 10 minutes. Once fluffy, transfer it into a piping bag that's fitted with a round nozzle and pipe small meringues on a silicon sheet. Now zest some lime zest on top and dust a thin layer of the lavage powder we made before on top as well. Then dry them at 50 degrees Celsius for a couple of hours. Now we can start to finish the muse. First lay the yellowtail slices on a frozen tray and toast the top slightly with a blowtorch. The frozen tray will ensure the fish tastes raw on the bottom. Now season it with some flaky salt and lime zest. Then place a meringue upside down on a plate and put a ponzu jelly on top. Now lay the torched yellowtail on there and put the chicken skin crispies in between. Then pipe a couple dots of the lavage emulsion on top and decorate it with some lavage leaves and long ward flowers. Okay guys, that's it for today. I'm super happy with the result and I had a lot of fun with Andrea. It was amazing visiting the fish farm and yeah, we just had a lot of fun making the wonderful yellowtail bite. I hope you had fun as well. Yeah, actually I was so, so excited to be here for this collaboration. Even with this guy, it doesn't matter anyway. <laughs> it's been it. super, super fun. And uh, we created something that I'm sure you're gonna enjoy. You're gonna love it so much because trust me, it's just one bite. It's gonna be so full of flavor and freshness. It's gonna be amazing. I'm curious, you already had one, but this is my first one. So yep. I tasted it already. Yeah, let's just dig in. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. So how is that? Does it work? Super good. That's fucking delicious. You're gonna love it, guys. For real. You can really taste the fish. The dashi is amazing. And really the freshness, the toasted fish, and then the chicken skin gives it a lot of umami. Yeah. A lot of freshness as well, but it's rich. It's, I think it's got something of everything, right? Texture wise yeah, as know, well. It's all balanced perfectly. It's cool. really amazing. Yeah. It's amazing how much flavor there can be inside just one bite. That's super cool. Thank you so much, mate. Well, appreciate it. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Um, I hope you guys liked the video as well. Please let me know in the comments on what you want to see next. Like and share and subscribe if you want to see more great content and if you want to learn more recipes. Again, thanks for coming all the way from Italy and I hope to see Thank you. Thank you. It's been my pleasure. In really. two weeks at my wedding. You're going to cook <laughs> at my wedding. So I'm going to see you. In That's going to be super exciting too. Okay, guys. Thank you, guys. Bon appétit. Buon appetito! Now I can finally talk Italian again! Italian, 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 Italian,